Okay, let's continue. Now we want to look at uh, examples of stiff ODEs. Here we have one. So, uh, this is an ODE, and that is, let's, let me write it, and we look at it. One, and that is actually by if the author that gave these three definitions based on physical characterization, the solution, and the mathematical characterization for systems. And that is the following. We have y prime is equal to minus 100y plus 100t plus 101. The initial condition is y of 0 is general definition is y0. And the exact solution to this is equal to 1 plus t plus y0, initial condition, minus 1, e to the power minus 100t. And this uh, solution is the one that we see here in the figure. is that, ah, here it is, that the solution, it, we look at the red curve, the, the dots, they are numerical solution that we discuss later. So we start here, and then we go down here, and this is actually the line 1 plus t. So the solution goes very quickly on that line because this rapid part, so that is the rapidly varying part in our example, this one here, that is very quickly so small that it does not play any role. Already here we are at 0.02 or something, then the e to the minus um, 10 or 20, whatever it is, is so small that we can neglect that. So then all is dominated by the 1 plus t. So in this example, we have then what he's characterized as a, a small variation that is here, that there is slowly this part, and this is then the rapid transient. And you see, it is only important near t equal to zero. So that was the characterization from the solution that we can see reflected in this example. And if we would look at the stability of that, what would we do? We would compute the J in our case would be the D F of Ty dy. That is what we would compute. In that case, it's just a scalar we have just a scalar only here. What do we, do we get when we do that? We get just minus 100. It is linear in y. The t and this constant are, do not play any role, so this gives minus 100. There's also a way to characterize it as um, stiff from that. So because it is a rather large negative, relatively large negative number. When we would do the stability analysis, then we would do it for lambda equal minus 100. And that will 
we will do that in exercise 3 and also look a little bit more at this example. The numerical solution that we see here is with an implicit method because with an explicit method it uh, doesn't work that well. Let's see, you, get a, you, get, you do not get accurate solution near t equal to zero because these details are all missed. If you have here the time step is uh, two. So all the details from the initial condition, all what is happening here is missed because you cannot get the details if you have such a large time step. So that is something also to keep in mind when you have an implicit method that is stable it doesn't say that you get a good solution. That is something else. You have accuracy for accuracy. You have in some um, intervals of the solution, uh, you have to do, choose small time steps. If something, if a lot is happening here, then you also have to choose small time steps. Otherwise, you miss it, like you see here. But what implicit methods do, as you see here, they find then the solution, and then they are not too bad, actually. So that is this example. Let's see if I have the explicit Euler. Let's see. Let's look at that. Let's see. I think I have uh, chosen a time step. You will do the analysis. You will see where the time the step restriction is. But we can also do it uh, by uh, doing that here. Let's see if we get. Yeah, that is with the explicit Euler, but with an extremely small time step. So the other one was two. This is 0.01. So more than it's a factor of 200 smaller. And then we get uh, not too bad solution. Still, we miss also details here. So if we would increase the time step a little bit here. And uh, run it again. We see already some problems. We see some oscillations here. They are in the initial regions, but you see dots here, we get some solution here, which is completely out of range. You will see we are still in the stable stability domain. But still we get oscillating solutions. And this gets worse and worse. And you can then do your own experiments if we are then getting across the stability limit, the solution simply explodes. And it is simply useless. And that, is, uh, that can happen quickly or it can take some time. Usually it happens rather quickly. You would see it in, an instability shows up usually rather quickly. Okay, so that was already something on the numerical solution, but now let us first, before we come to this method that was used here for the implicit scheme, the implicit uh, Euler method, I can put that also up again. Let's see that was the implicit Euler, like this one. Before we come uh, to uh, uh, how the method is built up, I want to give another example. The other example is now a system. This was a scalar example, but the system examples, they are usually um, even more complicated because we then have more components. And then we can have what he said, we can have uh, eigenvalues that are very different in magnitude. So. Second example for now for a stiff ODE system. And that is by an author called Gear. He's written in some books, in, I think in the 70s. And one of the examples that is the following the first component of the solution, which is called Y1, the derivative of that is equal to 998y1 plus 1998y2. So 
that is our first component of our function. So we would write a function that would be our first component. The y2, the second component of this ODE system, has the slope minus 999 y1 minus 1999 y2. So that will correspond to the second component of our ODE system. So that would be then <coughs> four. We would have we have the initial conditions. So the initial condition is that the, the y we are now working with the vector already here. Uh, that is the y, and that is the y of zero. That is the y one of zero, y two of zero, and that is in this example one zero. So that is the system, and we can see we can write this system also uh, in the form. So that is the system of ODEs. can write as uh, 5 as y prime is equal to f of ty <coughs> with these components. So that we would, if we would do the programming, for example, for um, any MATLAB function, for example, ODE45, or some of the ones that are better for stiff problems that we would see, we would do the programming as we did for the planetary problem or for the for the orbits with the two magnets. Define a function func that contains then these components. And um, the Jacobian matrix of that is very simple because actually we can write this as a linear system already. So if we write our we first, as an exercise, compute the Jacobian. Then we get the following Jacobian matrix of uh, years ODE. Would be the following J. Y, in our case, it's just a function of y. And then we would take the f1 and take the derivative with respect to y1. Then we take the first component, take the derivative with respect to y2. <coughs> then we do the same thing for the second component, f2 derivative with respect to y1 <coughs> with respect to y2. So that is our Jacobian. And you see we can write the system actually in this form that we that we write it as y prime is equal to j times y because it's a linear ODE. Then we can write it Now, what is interesting is to look at the eigenvalues, because that was one characterization by the eigenvalues are, are very different in magnitude. Eigenvalues of J are the following. We find that is elementary linear algebra. Number one is minus one. Number two is minus thousand. So then the magnitudes are different by three orders. So the minimum and absolute value is one, the maximum absolute value is thousand. So that is then fallen under the category of a stiff ODE system by Heath. And the exact solution can then be written in the following way. Let's see. 
example that you might remember from your math class, I don't know, if you remember how to solve, say if you want to solve this, remember the, the initial condition y that on 0 was 1, 0. So that you have this matrix J, this ODE system with this initial condition, compute the exact solution. So, so, if you want to repeat that, you can do that, and you will find that you get the following. The Y of T is a system, of course, and the first component, that is Y1, is then 2 times E to the minus T minus e to the minus 1000 t. And the second component, y2, is minus e to the minus t plus e to the minus 1000 t. So, and then we can already see from this that also this solution contains a slowly varying part and a rapidly varying part. Suppose the y1 and the y2 have here a slowly varying part. And here they have a rapidly varying part. But it is again, as in the first example, only rapidly varying near t equal to 0. Again, very local. So that would then fulfill the characterization by Heath also regarding the solution having um, some rapid transients with these ones here and otherwise slowly varying solution. So, how does the solution look like? directly the implicit Euler. We use in that case uh, the one by for gear and we use in that case just 25 time steps. Let's see if that works. Yes, we get something. So First, we don't care about the numerical solution. We just look at the red lines, the, the exact solution of the ODE system. The upper line here, the curve, is the Y1. And that is starting from 1 and going very quickly up. And then it is following, essentially, here the line E to the minus uh, 2 times E to the minus T. So that is following, following this curve. So this vanishes very quickly. And then it is taken over essentially by this part. The y1 then um, starts from zero, and also there this part vanishes very quickly, and then it is falling minus e to the minus t. So it's starting from zero, falling down here, you can hardly see it, and then it is falling here minus e to the minus t. So again, rapid variation of both components y1 and y2 near y equal to 0 and then a slow variation. And again here the implicit method, implicit Euler, um, does it but again missing the details near 
the origin here t equal to zero because the time step here is 0.04, which is relatively large and it is active. So the first results are only here, so the details here are of course missed. To get that, one would have to choose much smaller time steps to get the small, uh, the, the rapid changes in the beginning. But again, solution later on follows the solution curve relatively well. And also here with an explicit method you would have difficulties similar as we saw for the first example by Heath. Okay, so and then you will then do the example for the uh, chemical kinetics in exercise 3 and then you will see how then the different methods work. You will use then uh, MATLAB functions, not ODE 45, that doesn't work, but there are ODE 23S and 15S, there are a couple of inbuilt functions, they are essentially all implicit. And that is the reason why we now turn our attention to implicit methods. So we have now some motivation, explicit methods fail, or you need forever to do the computation because the stability restriction is so forcing you to so small time steps. If you use an explicit method, then it happens what uh, Rader described as uh, when you're walking in, in the Grand Canyon and you're short-sighted, you bump against the one wall and the other, it is then the error control that forces you back. But then you can only get very uh, oscillatory uh, solutions that are really not very good. And uh, with implicit methods, on the other hand, you can get large time steps and you are essentially not short-sighted as with the exit, but you are far-sighted. So you have the possibility to see longer where you're going and to find your way properly. So that is the analogy from hiking in a canyon. Now we want to get that done using implicit methods. And we'll start with the implicit Euler method, that is the simplest implicit method. And that can actually be derived <coughs> by using backward difference, that's also the reason for the name. It can be derived by approximating the ODP that we are discussing. Approximate that now at the new time level. That's, that's the catch. Y prime equal to F of Ty. So this Y prime, we essentially look at the new time level. That's the catch. And then also this must be at the new time level, and this must be at the new time level. So we go essentially to the new time level, and we see take here a backward difference on that.
fake. So I use the YN, the N as the index. Right, I use I, use it. And that is divided by the time step, using HN to have it general. And the important thing is, as I already said, that now the function f is evaluated at the new time and with a solution, with a new solution that we not yet have. So that, that's difficult. And from that we get then the algorithmic form of the implicit or backward Euler method as y n plus 1 solution at the new time level is equal to the one the old plus the uh, time step hn times the slope which is f of t n plus 1 y n plus 1. And that is the difficulty that the solution also appears here in f. But we'll see how we can tackle that. If we analyze the local truncation error, we can do that by Taylor expansion. We find that it is second order local truncation, like for the for Euler's method. Local truncation error. We call that E n is order a squared, and then we have then seen the argument. But then the global error, which is the interesting one, uh, is uh, E n, what gives the number, n is order h. So that means the implicit Euler method is first order accurate. spacing we get to the same point in time then the error is expected to be halved. So now we want to analyze the stability also for this. the method to this. What do we get? We get yn plus 1 is equal to yn, take now just h, not hn, make it simpler, and then the f. The f again is f of ty is just lambda y. So that means we get lambda y n plus 1. So that is the important thing that we get that. So that is equivalent, now we shuffle everything on the left hand side, we get uh, there the 1 minus lambda h y n plus 1 is equal to uh, y n. And from that we can see then that the y n plus 1 is equal to the 
1 over 1 minus lambda h times yn. From that we can then see the amplification factor. So then we see from that if we take out a step that uh, So do that. Amplification factor means that this is one. Amplification factor to the power n times y zero, which is one. So that is then. This is then amplification factor. So this is just to remember, remind you of that. Amplification factor. method is then G of lambda H and that is then this factor or we see it here yn plus 1 divided by yn it is this factor here that is now 1 divided by 1 minus lambda H and the stability condition is that this in absolute value has to be smaller equal than 1 So look for by checking the stability domain in, in which domain should lambda h be such that this condition is fulfilled. So that uh, we can say a similar way as we argued before for Euler's method, Euler's method and the uh, fourth order Ryan Cutter method. This is equivalent to lambda h being in the stability domain of the method, which is all the complex numbers z for which the absolute value, in that case it will be 1, and then it will be 1 minus z. So this is the absolute value that has to be smaller or equal to 1. And now we get really large domain for that. Already, if you think of uh, z being real and negative, we get here one plus something. We get some large thing larger than one. Again. That is definitely smaller than one. So we get now everything on the real axis to the negative is smaller than one, and we get even more. And it turns out that we get the following stability domain, which is extremely large, real part of lambda h, imaginary part of lambda h. And it is only when we have um, plus 1 when we get trouble in, in the domain around 1. It turns out actually it is here we have the origin. If we have a slope, uh, that. So the slope going through the origin. So everything outside <coughs> this um, this uh, circle around one with a radius of one, all that is outside is the stability domain of the implicit oil method. So the S is now extremely large. So we can say it is in fact the whole complex plane except for uh, a disk D where the disk D is the complex 
numbers for which z minus 1 is smaller than 1. So that is the disk with origin at 1 and the radius that is smaller than 1. Everything except for that disk is in part of the stability domain of the implicit order method. So it's really large. So just the D is a disk around one with radius. Radius one is not included, it's only this up to that. Okay, so what can we do with that? We can use now the coupling to the ODE that we want to solve by the Jacobi. example at the very beginning uh, when we discussed ODEs to explain local truncation error and global error. So in that case the Jacobian that case matrix is just a scalar that is J is equal to Tf of Ty Dy just a scalar here, this is just minus 5. So that is our lambda now. Lambda is now minus 5. And then the stability condition that we discussed it is uh, stability condition for that becomes then 1 divided by 1 minus lambda h that becomes 1 divided by 1 plus 5 h so minus lambda is then lambda is minus 5 h plus so that is definitely smaller equal 1 actually smaller that is satisfied For all, actually, for all time steps, h greater than equal to zero. We can just use here whatever we want. It is always satisfied. So, and a method that has this property, that you have no limit, no upper limit for the time step, is called unconditionally stable. So that means. Implicit Euler method for this ODE is unconditionally stable. So, yes, that is implicit Euler method is unconditionally stable. For the ODE that we discussed, y prime minus 5y. And that's it. So that means we can show that with any time step h we want. It will still be stable, but it will is not necessarily <coughs> guaranteed to be accurate, that we saw in the examples before. Something is happening very quickly, some point or some interval in time, we have to 
use small time steps. Otherwise, we miss the details. But regarding stability, we have no problem. Okay. So, then we have seen today some applications and analysis for the stability. First, for Ranga-Kata methods. There we got some limits for the H. Could also do it for this example here. We have done that for the implicit Euler method before. For Hoyne's method, you would just get the same stability limit because lambda is real. For the Runge cutter 4, we would get a little larger, but instead of 2, we would have 2 times square root of 2. So it's only a little bit larger, the limit, but we get a limit. But for the implicit Euler method that we have now discussed, there is no limit. So then you can just choose H according to your accuracy requirements. And then that is then the type of method that is useful for solving stiff problems, because they usually need that, that you have stability, and then you have only locally to choose the time step small to get the rapidly varying transient, <coughs> otherwise you can use rather large time steps. Okay, so that for today, tomorrow we'll continue on that and we'll see some other methods, implicit methods, and also I want to give you a clue of what is inside the uh, MATLAB's routines. Okay.